Mavs Celtics. It's said and done. The Celtics put, pulled it off. Not to brag again, but I did call Celtics in five. What do you guys think overall of the NBA Finals? I think first we should get Luke's thoughts, who did pick the Mavericks, the only person to pick the Mavericks in this podcast. So would love to hear his thoughts first. We, I have not chatted with any of you so far about the finals just yet so i would love to get i would love to get luke's thoughts and then everyone else's so you know originally when we made those predictions we didn't plan that out at all you know uh, so me choosing the mavs great great for the pot obviously um i was just kind of hoping they would they would win this one so i could run victory laps around each one of you but you know i think what the downfall was is that one that one um Video you saw with uh, Luca holding his his recovery beer, his quote recovery beer, and getting taken away. I think that was the turning point. I think he needed his, uh, you know, his PED that is his recovery beer to win this one. Um, but no, for real though, uh, they just they just could not match up for um, or you know against the Celtics in this series. It just seemed like the Celtics were just incredibly deep. You know, the best player on their team the whole season. Um, seemingly was Jason Tatum, but they did have, you know, Jalen Brown that basically made, um, made, made, made it known that he also is a really good player, all NBA and all that. Um, but yeah, I, I'd like to see, you know, what happens next year. Um, can they keep this momentum going? Um, and we'll see, I think. I, yeah. I would just like to point out. I was getting a lot of flack from everyone on here for even suggesting that could Jalen Brown or Drew Holiday be in conversation for finals MVP. He pulled it off. I think it's very well deserved. And I think it's his team. I don't think it's Tatum's team. To be fair, he was there uh, He was there before, right? Didn't he get drafted first? A year earlier, yeah. So, oh. a little, little bit there. I think he's got it. For sure. You know, I wouldn't venture to go as far to say this is Jalen Brown's team. I think, yes, he did win finals MVP and it was well-deserved. Um, I thought Tatum would have won it, but again, they're not giving it to the most popular player. It's like that first Warriors title when they give it to Iguodala, who had a fantastic finals. It's not saying uh, Brown is the better player than Tatum. I still think Tatum is the better overall player. However, Brown did much had a much better finals, had a much better playoffs. Um, I just I don't think I, I just I, it's hard pressed to tell me that this is Jalen Brown's team after the after this finals. He even said this this NBA um, Finals MVP trophy is split between myself and Tatum. Team guy, he understands that hey, it's both of them. It's not a one man show. This is both of them, and it's both of our teams rather than just hey, this is my team or this is Jason's team. I I will say, though, I think now that Jalen Brown actually has a left hand and he can go both ways to the basket, Tatum better watch out. I don't, Tatum might be requesting a trade going into next season. I don't know how much he feels spited there. But another quick call out, too, before I get to you, Bo. Michael Finley, former Badger, I think, was the one that took the beer away from Luka after the game. So former Badger, great, great basketball player. But I always like to call those those guys out. I was just going to touch base and say it was really good to see Tatum and Brown. I just, in this last game, how dominant they both looked. I believe it was they had 17 assists, and they're both the top two scorers on their team. Definitely after Tatum's performance after the game, basically copywriting several famous NBA quotes, I think that was somewhat embarrassing. So definitely Jalen Brown deserved that. He just quotes. He is a quotes guy. He is a quotes guy. He just didn't, no citations. He would have failed those English classes. But yeah, I definitely still think it's Tatum's team. I just like how they both gave each other respect. And you can tell that they get along well. The locker room's not divided. I feel like compared to being a Bucks fan, our locker room does not feel like that. So shout out Celtics. And I'm glad, glad they got one together. And I think you hit it on the head, Luke, right? The Celtics, we knew they were going to be deeper. Good God, was I scared, though, when they got 
Porzingis out there. I mean, that was a huge shock. I don't think anybody thought he was going to play. And he was moving around horribly. I, I tweeted out, he looked, he looked like second half Luca. He was moving around so slow. And they were hunting him, trying to get those switches going. But I, I get it. I mean, close out game, might as well throw him out there, see if he can do anything. But um, overall, didn't have a huge impact. But yeah, the story just goes, I mean, what, what more can Luca do, right? 30 and 10. Um, he can only carry the team so much. And I, I just think Kyrie, too, very disappointing series overall. Very quiet. Looked pretty, pretty reserved. I don't know if I don't know if timid's the the right word there, but as Coleman's pointed out in the past too, he's he's got a ridiculous record at um, in Boston, right? Coleman, what what was that he's stat again? Is it since he left Boston? Yeah, that's unbelievable. It's probably I think it's zero fifteen now, probably. Yeah, I I think and and again maybe. Maybe he's not comfortable there with with how things ended, or he's you know it's something a bit more psychological since he's left. But Celtics were the better team, and you know hats off to them. I think one of our good friends, some someone who might be related to someone else here, texted us immediately afterwards. Is a joy or relief? What do you guys think? I I, I think, think it's joy. Go ahead, Colin. I th- I think it's more relief. And I love this. this is my favorite question of all time. Most <laughs> title. Um, I think it's more relief as you get to the last five of six conference finals. You make a finals in 2021. You're the favorite every year coming into the East, even with Giannis in Milwaukee. You're the favorite every single year, and you haven't done it in six years. So I think this title is a lot more relief of, hey, we finally got over the hump. And now year after year, if we keep winning, it's going to be joy because we finally got over, we finally got that first one and let's see what we can do from here. Because, I mean, they're set up for success in the future as well. I think this could, yeah, they're the best team in the East right now. I mean, yes, New York wasn't healthy. The Pacers weren't that healthy. Philly wasn't that healthy. But I still think, even with all those teams being healthy, I still think they're the best team coming into the East again next year as well. I don't know. I, I don't know if you saw the news today, but Sixers were apparently working out Sam Decker. So I mean that that might be the missing piece that that Philly needs there. I I wouldn't I wouldn't sleep on them with those kind of names being tossed around. I think specifically for for Al Horford, I think I think it's joy, to be honest, because how old he is. I mean, all these other guys. I mean, they're arguably one of the younger teams, at least with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum at this point. Um, just with uh, draft class, I mean, this whole team basically was built around uh, starting in 2017, I believe, is the Jalen Brown um, draft class. But um, Al Horford being 38 years old and finally getting a, um, an NBA championship, I think that's I'm, – I'm happy for him. I'll say that. Good for him. Especially having to play the minutes that he had to play with Chris Stapps for Zingas out. So he, he worked for it for sure. Definitely, yeah. definitely think it's joy. The Boston fan base is already nuts as it is. They're so passionate about sports. Now I feel like this is like the spark that ignites in the future. Like, all right, we now know we can do it. And now the expectation will be, I think it's the opposite of what Coleman was saying. Like, this is finally, they got over the hump. Like you said, everybody's probably happy. Now it'll be like, this is the standard and they have to keep performing. And it'll be more, less joy and more relief the farther and farther they go as a dynasty. And, this might be a silly question with them just winning the finals, but we don't know what the next, you know, however many years will hold for the Celtics. Obviously, they still have a very great core. But do you think we'll look back at this time leading up to this championship really being drastically underwhelmed and just really kind of disappointed with some of these years that they had before them not getting over the hump? Or do you think it's just uh, part of their journey and, and finally getting over over the hump there? And Boston fans really won't won't care about that because, like you said, Bo, they are a pretty pretty unique fan base and not the easiest on anybody there. So I just wonder what we'll look back at that period for the Celtics in you know next 10, 10, 20 years. I think some of those series, I think, especially with the Heat last year, and I want to say it was the Heat a few years back. I'm, it wasn't in the first round, but it was. It was two different series with the Heat. I think those definitely weigh in on you. Um, but I, I guess to win a title, you got to lose some games. 
and you have to know how to lose in order to know how to win. But I think, I think this is the culmination of everything that they've done, and it's it's awesome for Boston. It's awesome for the Celtics. Um, Brad Stevens' first title, and the guy who like kind of was the architect of this team. So I think it's really good for for them. But yeah, I, I, to answer your question, I think it is like you do have to lose a little bit. I think Boston fans were a little bit fed up. Um, I know listening to Bill Simmons and Ryan Russillo, who are Celtic fans, they're like, when do you break up Tatum and Brown? They've said it the past couple of years, and I really like how Boston stuck with both of them. I don't, I, I don't think you see that a lot in the NBA anymore. Yeah, you have Curry and Clay who did that in, in the war and Draymond in the Warriors dynasty, but outside of that, you don't really see many teams stick with your two guys and build around them for the future. No matter where you go, if you have a bad finals loss, to like the like they did the Warriors in 2021, or you have a bad exit to the Heat last year, I still like how they trusted those two guys and continued and continued to build around them and give them the pieces that they need to succeed in order to win that title. Yeah, oftentimes leashes are way too short, and uh, it, it's good them kind of going against the grain there, as opposed to hey where the biggest stars that are tradable are on the market. And let's just try to group another two or three of them together to, to see, see what we can do there. Um, I do Jalen Brown's running out of time though. I think he has one year to win four titles to be on track for his very infamous uh, interview. He had a few years back. Don't know if he's going to get it done. We'll see. Can I say something as well about Jalen Brown? I'm going to, well, this is yes. The Jalen Brown hype show with him winning the finals MVP and stuff like that. Can I zag here and say he's the highest paid NBA player in history? Shouldn't this be expected of someone who has the highest contract value of all time? Well, I think his teammates about to get them even higher. So we'll see how that, how long that'll last, you know, whose team will it be at na- after that? You know, I feel like that kind of answers whose team it is. It's like, okay, yeah. Who's the highest paid player at the time, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I. That's a good point. I just think everybody's framed this as Tatum's team. It's good for Jalen to get this. I think he's really developed these past few years. He's always had the defense, but really has been a formidable scorer these past few years. And even just looking at last time's last night's game, I think he had what was it? Three steals, three blocks, just an incredible all around um, stat stuffing performance. It's interesting. I was listening to uh, Russillo actually, and they were talking about um, the Batman and Robin aspect of some other teams, right? But I, I wonder as we continue to go along here, again, it seems like Tatum and Brown are great centerpieces for the organization. Doesn't seem like there's any friction there. And I, I hope that continues to be the case because we, we know how difficult it can be to manage different personalities and, and this big money within a locker room. I think Steven should be able to command that quite well. But you juxtapose that to Kyrie Irving and Luca. And again, I'm, I'm not stealing from this, but Russillo did mention like, you know, it's interesting seeing Kyrie with Luca now. And after saying that he didn't want to be basically second filled, filled to LeBron, I didn't, I wouldn't have put that together on my own, but it is, it is quite interesting. I just wonder, I know think from what we saw, I don't think Kyrie alone is going to be the answer. They need to go out and get some more pieces around Luca. And Luca, again, he just looks so beat up that he needs to take an ice bath for about four months, I think, and just not do anything. But he clearly gave it his all. I just, I just don't think relying on him and Kyrie to drop sixty points in order to win a game is is that that feasible at all. A lot more recovery beers. That's a lot, right. a lot more a lot recovery more. beers. Yeah. And did you guys check the the viewership numbers at all? Or I, I don't know how well watched the the game was, but I I don't think it was comparable to quite a few of the, the past ones. Am I right there? I don't know if last night was released yet, but I did see um I think game four was the second lowest rated finals game outside of Lakers Heat in the bubble. Wow. Yeah, did you I mean just did you guys care about this finals, like point point blank? I mean, I know we're we're watching it for the the podcast, and I mean we are NBA fans and, and everything. But just com- compared to other years, like what? How did you feel? Um, 
you know, Grizzly fan first, NBA fan second. Um, so this year, kind of a wash for the old Grizzlies. So I didn't care about it as much. But I, I think I cared about it, you know, game one. But then you see the outcomes of these games, you know, game two, game three, you know, all that. And it's just the margins are so large. It's like, dang, do we know the outcome already? It's like, I don't know if I, it, yes, we're watching the Celtics and it's one of the greatest organizations in the league. Um, but I don't know if that's enough to make more people watch it if they know that, you know, it's just going to be a sleeper the whole time. Yeah, I figured you would have tuned in, Luke, to watch Xavier Tillman, but I guess I guess not. Dude, X. Yeah, he gets a ring, baby. Always got to look for the, you know, I'm always for former Grizzlies getting rings. But I'm just hoping the Grizzlies eventually will get rings, you know, themselves. So maybe I, next year. Look out, Celtics. Look out. And the Western Conference, front, Western Conference as a whole, I guess. I, I do real quick tweet of the week, probably. I saw someone post a picture of Xavier Tillman, and they said, this guy's 25 years old. I thought he was a 35-year-old vet ring chasing, and I thought that was quite accurate. I thought that was fair. That's- no, it's funny because, like, in uh, uh, COVID, when I think it was, like, his first season, it, like, me and my brother were watching, and, it, you know, it says his last name. It says, you know, Z- Xavier Tillman Sr., and I'm like, yo, how old is this guy? How old can he be a senior already? It's like, dude. But, yeah, he he, he looked so much worse when he was in the Grizzlies because he had mad, like – you know, uh, yeah, male or... pattern baldness. Now I think he's just completely shaved his head and, you know, he, he looks, you know, good. And, but yeah, ha- happy for old X. Bo Coleman. How did uh, you feel about the finals overall? I think you hit it on the head last podcast, how you said Dallas is probably going to win one at home and then Celtics really sweep it back at home. And both of those games really were blowouts, which is hard to watch because past the fourth quarter of each game you already really had a good feel for who should win the game at least it wasn't close but i personally just like the games at boston just because i felt like the fans are way more into it like the energy level outside of the players felt like it was there even this last game you could tell right from tip that the celtics were about it and the energy was there the hustle was there they're making all the plays and the only not to diss on the Mavs, but like Kyrie jumping into the stands was like the only like flash memory like hustle play that really came in for the Mavericks that game but they were down by 20 and obviously Lucas so banged up that he's not going to go diving for a ball and they still need him to score 20. Yeah for me it was and, and I love the NBA um, I watched pretty much all of the finals games um, for me it was as watchable as Raptors Warriors in 2019. Mm-hmm. No, maybe 22, I, I, whatever year it was. Raptors Warriors, it was on par with that finals um, to me. It was, yes, it was entertaining. Yes, I was very excited to get the matchup um, when the conference finals ended. But I was hoping to see Denver. I was hoping to see the two best teams in Denver, Boston. I think Dallas really avoided a bullet by having Memphis or Minnesota beat um, the Nuggets. But I didn't think you got the two best teams. Yeah, it's an interesting storyline with Luka making his first finals and Kyrie's return to Boston. But I think Boston was just such a more dominant team. And you could tell that before even getting into the finals. I mean, hell, Jake predicted it before one. Um, but I think the, the interesting storyline to me at the end of this and throughout the entire finals is the fact that Boston won 80 plus games. They're the 10th team in NBA history to win 80 plus games. So I think that's a really interesting statting. It really kind of puts this team, which, yes, has Tatum and Brown, but they're not two mega stars. They're not your Giannis. They're not your Embiid. They're not your Luka. They're not your Curry or LeBron. It, it, it really puts this into perspective how good of an overall team was the Boston Celtics this year. And the fact that they won 80 plus games, the fact that they were so deep and they didn't have one superstar per se to lead this team. So I think that was the biggest, for me at least, um, the biggest moment and biggest thought of the finals and it, this seems like maybe one of the quietest 80 win seasons i'm not saying that the celtics aren't impressive but again when you think of draw just you know the attention that these types of teams typically get and maybe it's because i'm not again east coast boston guy totally could be but didn't didn't have the same feel at least to me 
even with Luca, right? I mean, Luca, top whatever NBA player, obviously amazing. Am I still crazy for feeling like I'm getting some some comparisons of like James Harden on the Rockets versus like Luca on the Mavs? I mean, it's it's not a perfect uh, perfect match there, but almost seems like it's somewhat comparable, right? Like if Luca's not getting it done, sure you got some other guys out there, but it's just not not happening. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not, but that's what I keep coming back to, and I, I can't seem to get away from that thought at all. I think I think with Boston, and, and not to talk about not to talk about Luca, but I think what makes this Boston team so special, and the fact that no one is talking about it, is the well one, they are like putting up they in the regular season they did put up historical offensive efficiency numbers. I mean, this historically speaking, statistically speaking, he was one of the best teams of all time. I mean, that's the basketball sicko. That's not what you're going to see on first take. That's not what you're going to see on get up. But I think that's, if, as, as, from a true basketball perspective, yes. The way they share the ball, the way they play on offense, the way they play so quick, the way they score so efficiently, yes. I think it, that's super, super impressive. But from a name standpoint and from what ESPN and, like, Fox and, like, all the other big networks want to see, no, it, did, it didn't have that star power. Yes, it had Luka, but it's, that's, that's only, there's only one. Like when you look at those Warriors Cavs series, oh, you have LeBron, you got Curry, you have Draymond, you have Clay, you got Kyrie, you have a ton of different names. I don't think Luca and, and Kyrie in the le- later stage of his career, and then Jalen Brown and Tatum moved the needle as much as those finals would. Very true. Yeah, it was just it's tough to watch. It's tough to watch Dallas sometimes because right, it's like Luca. They'll run a double screen, try to get the switches, and, and he'll go to work. If that's not happening better have like a lively alley-oop it seemed like uh going back to last series or you know Kyrie's got to make it happen on his own and yeah they just need more shot creators because Dante Exum not I mean Energizer Bunny but boy oh boy he's not he's not gonna be that guy that you need to be doing that and be interested to see how the roster construction continues going into next year and we'll be doing more free agency breakdowns and uh draft breakdowns as we go forward here these next few weeks so uh 